Hello, welcome to lesson five of the additional maths course. Okay, today we're going to be looking at quadratics um, and we're going to look specifically at exercise 2.3 of this textbook. And um, that exercise is basically just um, a complete overlap of the GCC course. And it's all focused around um, factorizing quadratics, solving quadratics through factorization, solving quadratics through completing the square, uh, solving quadratics by using the quadratic formula. Um, so I could just skip this completely, but I want to focus in on one skill, completing the square, which I think is mostly overlooked at um, GCC. It's, it's often sort of, you know, left aside in favor of factorizing and using the quadratic formula, but it's an extremely important skill at advanced level maths. And I'm going to focus in on more advanced completing the square and solving equations using completing the square. Okay, so I'm going to start with a very simple one. Okay, so you get the gist of what I'm talking about. Okay, so completing the square for x squared minus 6x plus 2. So Let's say we've got this and we want to put it in completed square form. When it says completed square form or complete the square for this, it's looking for an expression where you've got a bracket squared, some sort of binomial, some, some bracket with an expression in squared, plus or minus some other value, some other constant. Okay, so you might have x plus a all squared plus or minus b. It's called completing the square because your x plus a is being squared. So this expression here, the x plus a all squared, is your square. It is a square. It is something that which has been squared. And the plus or minus b completes that square. Okay. It, it may not be enough just to have x something squared. You may not be able to get the expression you want just by squaring something. So you might need to alter it slightly by adding or subtracting something to get what you want. So that's what we're going to do in this case. We're going to turn x squared minus 6x plus 2 into a square plus or minus something. Okay. Now, if I want to square something to get x squared minus 6x plus 2, I've got to think I want to square some bracket which will give me what I want. Now, I know that if I square something, I'm timesing it by itself. So if I had x and x, that'll give me my x squared, brilliant. Now, I need the number next to the x to be the same in both brackets because I'm squaring it, so I'm timesing it by itself. I need to get minus 6x. In order to get minus 6x, I'm going to need to have these two terms in the expansion the top right and the bottom left in this bracket, I need them to be the same because you're going to have the same number there and there. So those two are going to be the same and they're going to combine to make minus 6x. So they're going to need to be both half of that, so minus 3x. And hence, these two will need to be minus 3. So my bracket is going to be x minus 3 all squared because that's going to give me my x squared it's going to give me minus 3x and minus 3x, so it'll give me minus 6x. However, the unfortunate thing is it doesn't give me plus 2. What it gives me is 9. Minus 3 times minus 3 is 9. I want 2. So I've got to think, what, what alteration do I need to do so that my final expression is only worth 2? Not 9, 2. And the bit that completes the square is the alteration. And here I have to subtract seven. If I subtract seven from this, I will get two. So remember, the bracket squared will give me x squared, it'll give me minus six x, and then it'll also give me nine. So if I take away seven from that, now I've got plus two. So this expression here is the completed square form of this expression here. So they are equivalent. Okay, I want you to have a go yourself at this one. 
So complete the square for x squared plus 8x plus 21. Pause the video, have a go, write it in complete square form. So something squared plus or minus something so that it is equivalent to x squared plus 8x plus 21. Okay, I'll go through the answer. You should have x plus 4 in the brackets because when you expand that, you'll have x squared, you'll have 4x and 4x, that'll make 8x, but you'll also have 16. You want 21, so you're going to have to add 5. So this is the completed square form for this expression. Okay, well done if you got that right. I'm now going to do another example where we're going to ramp up the level of difficulty slightly. I want to complete the square for this expression. 3x squared plus 24x plus 11. Now, as soon as you get an expression, a quadratic with the x squared, the coefficient of x squared greater than one. So here the coefficient of x squared is three. It becomes a slightly more difficult proposition to complete the square for. But if you follow the same process that I'm gonna go through, you should get it right every time. Just practice this process until you get it right. The key here is to try and alter this so that you have an expression where it's just one x squared that you need to complete the square for. And the way to do that is to focus in only on this part here, the 3x squared and the 24x. I'm gonna rewrite that by taking a factor of three out. If I take a factor of three out of those two parts, it'll be three lots of x squared and 8x. So that there is equivalent to the line above. The yellow box has been replaced with the yellow version of my next line. Now, I'm now going to focus in on this bit, the green section, the x squared and the 8x. That is what I'm going to complete the square for. And I'm going to keep the rest of that line the same. So I'm going to have three lots of something plus 11. So now just think about the x squared and the 8x. If I want to complete the square for x squared plus 8x, what would that be? So that would be a bracket squared. The bracket itself would be x plus 4 all squared. Because that would give me my x squared, it would give me 4x and 4x, which would give me 8x. It would also give me 16. I don't want 16, I want nothing. I want no number, so I have to subtract 16. So that green section there is equivalent to that green box there. Okay, so each line is still equivalent to the line before. At this point, I'm now going to expand the outer brackets. I'm going to multiply the square part by 3 and I'm going to multiply the minus 16 by 3. And that's what I get. 3 lots of the square, x plus 4 all squared. 3 lots of minus 16 is minus 48. And I've got this plus 11, which hasn't been multiplied by 3. I've sort of left it out. It's been always on the right side throughout. And in this final line, I'm now going to combine the minus 48 with the 11. And I get three lots of this bracket, x plus four all squared, minus 37, because minus 48 plus 11 is negative 37. Okay, so I'd like you now to have a go at a similar one. Can you try and complete the square for this second one here? 2x squared minus 20x plus 17. So write that in completed square form. Pause the video, have a go, follow the same steps that I did and see if you can get it right. If you get it wrong, it's fine. Okay, just try and try again until you are perfecting the process. Okay, I'm gonna run through the answer now. So first take a factor of two out. 
out of just these two parts, x squared minus 10x multiplied by 2 will be 2x squared minus 20x. And the 17 is left aside throughout. Then complete the square for the bit in the bracket. That's x minus 5 all squared. That'll give you 25 you don't want, so you have to subtract 25 from that. And the 17 is still there. Then expand the brackets, the outer brackets. So it's two lots of x minus 5 all squared. Two lots of minus 25 is minus 50 plus 17. And then the last line is the completed square form. Two lots of x minus 5 all squared minus 33. So that there is the completed square form of your answer. If you got that right first time, superb. Okay. If you made mistakes along the way, but you understand what mistakes you've made, brilliant, that's fine. That is being a mathematician. So just work through the mistakes, make sure you try this again and again until you've ironed out the mistakes and you're making no more mistakes. Now, completing the square is a brilliant process and it helps us in many ways. It helps us find sketching quadratics. It helps us in mechanics questions where when we want to find the uh, maximum height of a projectile. And you'll find that out as you go through additional maths and, and through A-level maths, um, the usefulness of completing the square. So you want to have this skill as part of your um, skill set. So something that you can do without much thinking. So practice it until it is so. Now, we're going to use that process. Part two of this lesson is we're going to use that process to solve quadratics. Now, to be honest, most of the time when I solve quadratics, I factorize, probably about 70% of the time. The rest of the 30% of the time, probably 29% um, of the time, I will use the quadratic formula. And only about 1% of the time will I solve a quadratic by completing the square. Completing the square is more useful for other um, for other things, for finding vertices of quadratics, not for finding roots. But you might be asked to, to solve a quadratic by completing the square, and sometimes it is um, the best way. Very few times, but sometimes it is. And also, the quadratic formula is, is there and is possible because it is using the completed square form. That's where the quadra quadratic formula comes from, from using completed square form. But that's by the by. So let's solve this quadratic by completing the square. 3x squared plus 24x plus 11 equals 0. We have already completed the square for this. In my example, I completed the square and I got 3 lots of x plus 4 all squared minus 37 equals 0. So now, once you've got it in completed square form, it's relatively easy to solve. All you want to do is you want to find out what x is equal to. Now, you know that 3 lots of x plus 4 all squared will equal 37. Then, you know that x plus 4 all squared, if 3 lots of them is 37, then one of them is going to be 37 over 3. Okay, so you're trying to solve this equation, trying to find out what x is equal to. So from the completed square form, we added 37 to both sides. The next line, we divided both sides by, th by 3. And now, have a think what I will do as my next step. My next step is to find out what x plus 4 has to be equal to. And here is where lots of people will make a mistake. They will say that x plus 4 will equal the square root of 37 thirds. And they will be partly right. Now, the square root, the, the button on your calculator, the, the function square rooting only gives you the positive root of a value. If you put into your calculator the square root of 81, it'll give you 9. However, if you have a question, x squared equals 81, then x is either positive or negative square root of 81. It is either 9 or minus 9 the positive root of 81 or the negative root of 81. So when you want to do the inverse of squaring, it is the positive or negative square root that you want, okay? So 
In this case, x plus 4 will be either the positive or negative square root of 37 thirds. And since that's uh, not a square, 37 thirds is, I, I can't square root it in my head. Um, and if I did it on a calculator, it would give me some horrible decimal. It's much nicer to leave it exactly as a serve like that. And then I want to find x, so I subtract 4 from both sides. So I get minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 37 thirds. And that there is the solution. That is the, the two solutions, in fact, because there are two solutions there, either minus 4 plus the square root of 37 thirds or minus 4 minus the square root of 37 thirds. Those are the two solutions to this equation. OK, have a go at this one. You've already completed the square for it. So 2x squared minus 20x plus 17 equals 0. Solve that equation, leaving your answer in third form in simplified in, in a form like I did in my answer. OK, so pause the video, have a go. Right, here's the answer. So firstly, you already completed the square. The completed square form of this is two lots of x minus five all squared minus 33. So add 33 to both sides. You get two x minus five, two lots of x minus five all squared equals 33. Divide by two. So x minus five all squared equals 33 halves. And therefore x minus five has to equal the positive or negative square root of 33 halves. And therefore, x is equal to, if you add 5 to both sides, you get 5 plus or minus the square root of 33 halves. And that is the solution. OK, well done if you got that right. And what I would do now is I would go away and practice questions from exercise 2.3 in the textbook. So. Um, you feel fluent in all types of quadratics and that will really help you at your GCC level and um, it's essential throughout this course of ad maths that you are fluent with using and applying and, and all the skills to do with quadratics. Okay, so enjoy. <laughs>